up guys, this is Steve for Android at Night and today I'm going to be showing you 10 of my favourite exposed modules for Android. These are all going to be running <clears throat> on my Nexus 5. If you want to use these on your phone, you first of all need to be rooted and then you also need to have the exposed installer installed on your phone. If you don't know how to do either of those things, I'll put some helpful links in the description. So the first module we are going to be looking at is called Amplify. This will allow you to collect lots of detail about your device. This will let you look at wake clocks and whether your apps are firing alarms. These are things would wake your phone out of deep sleep and really, really negatively impact your battery life. If you get the paid version, this will let you change the wake lock time for any single service on your phone. Often this is for apps that are sending info back and forth via data. So for example, in the free version, you can change the NLP wake lock. This is one that is used by Google Now and Google Play services, and this is firing data backwards and forwards every so often to establish your location. It gives you the suggested options of between 180 and 600 seconds. And obviously if you put this to 600 seconds, it's gonna be firing slightly less regularly and it's going to be using slightly less battery life. Even just installing the free version of this, I have seen some significant increases in my battery life and that is only tweaking those two free wake lock options. Next on this list, we have Android Enify, and this is probably one of my favorite um, exposed modules of all time. It lets you make your Android phone look like you're running the most recent version of Android, which is of course Android N Nougat. So to quickly run through some of the best features in this, I really, really love the quick switch option in Android N. This lets you double tap on your recent button, and this will open up the most recent app. It lets you quick switch between two applications, and I've actually found, even on my Nexus 6P, I was using it a lot more than I was using the, um, the split screen mode. It's a really, really powerful way to multitask. And you've got a couple of options. You can change the tap speed and stuff like that to customize it to your heart is content. You can then go ahead and tweak your status bar. This will let you have those quick notification toggles at the top of your status bar when you just drag down once. And it will then give you the option to have some kind of approximation of the Android N quick settings tiles. You can also see that you can style notifications so they fill up the whole screen like it does in Android N, and it will let you use custom accent colors in your notification bar as well. Next up, we have awesome pop-up video, and this module will let you have a floating window playing with a video from YouTube or any other website that sources video. This just means you can multitask a little bit better. If you want to be replying to a text message, you can in the background. You could watch podcasts and YouTube videos and guides and stuff like that. I've used this occasionally if I'm cooking. I will have a recipe thing open on my phone. I will also watch something on YouTube at the same time to show me how to do a specific technique. This just means you can do both at once. So for example, I'm gonna do this on a YouTube video. You go to the video that you want, you hit the share button, and I'll have the option to share it to awesome pop-up player. Then it will pop up on your phone and you can pause it, you can interact with it, you can make it full screen if you want to. And it's just a really easy way to add a little bit of extra functionality to your YouTube app. Next up we have battery home icon and you can see at the bottom of my screen my home button is that circular home button that we've had since Android M. And instead of being a completely solid bar you can see that it is going around as if it was a power bar. When your battery life is full, this will be a completely white circle, and then as the battery on your phone decreases, the circle will decrease and decrease and decrease until you've got a little bit of a dot, and then your phone will run out of battery. This is a really cool use of the navigation bar. I really don't like a lot of stuff that puts stuff in the navigation bar. Quite often it's clunky, it doesn't really work, it sort of just doesn't really fit with the whole Android aesthetic, but I have to say that this is a really, really nice way of doing it. You can then go ahead and change the color of your battery home icon to anything that you want it to be. You can also have dynamic colors, which means when your battery is beneath 15% or above 15%, you can make it change color again as well. And you can also increase or decrease the thickness of the circle. I tend to keep it pretty thin just because then it looks much more like a sort of stock Android nav bar, but then obviously you've got this extra functionality. Next up on this list, we have Boot Manager, and this does exactly what you'd expect. It lets you choose which applications are allowed to start themselves when your phone boots. Obviously, this is great for things like launchers and icon packs that you want to actually be set from boot. You don't need to keep doing it every single time, but there are applications, for example, Amazon Kindle or Fenix, or something like minimalist wallpapers, which you don't actually need to be launched every time you boot your phone. All this is gonna do having these boot is slow your phone down and eat up resources. You can just tap on any of these apps and they will turn red and then they will not launch on boot and you'll have extra resources and your phone should restart a little bit quicker. Next up on this list, we have Gravity Box. I am using the specific Marshmallow version, but there are also versions for KitKat and I think Lollipop as well. This is one of the most powerful exposed modules you can use. It lets you tweak pretty much anything across your system. And this is one of the reasons that people don't need to install custom ROMs anymore. You can install, as 
as I've done on this, just an AOSP stock Android ROM. You can then install an exposed module like Gravity Box and you can just change anything you want. So just to show you a couple of the settings, there are some lock screen tweaks. So you can change the default wallpaper, you can have the lock screen just colored in or you can use a custom image. The other cool thing you can do is do last screen and this just means as soon as you power your phone off, your lock screen will display the last screen that was open. You can also then add shortcuts to your lock screen. So these are really easily accessible and let you get to your apps just a little bit quicker. Obviously this won't go past any security settings you have. So take that into account when you're setting them. I really love the fact that there's an option which means you have to double tap to launch an app. So if it's in your pocket and it's touching your leg, it is not gonna accidentally launch and start taking photos or sending tweets or whatever, whatever app you've got selected. You have to double tap on the application and then it will launch straight away. As I said, Gravity Box is so extensive, I can't really go through the whole thing in one video, but we will have a look at a few other things. You can go ahead and customize all of your quick setting tiles. This means you can put them in different orders. You can choose this one to actually show up and you can also edit them as well. You can also make it so some appear on your lock screen and some only appear when your phone is unlocked. In notification drawer style, you can do a couple of things. You can change the background of your notification drawer. You can change it to a single color, or you can go ahead and set a custom image. So once you've pulled this image off your SD card, you can then set this, and this will become the sort of wallpaper for your notification bar. You can then play around with your battery indicator. So you've got things like having the percentage in the middle. You've got a circle battery option. You can have circle with percentage. You can also have dashed circle if that's your kind of thing or then dashed circle with battery percentage or you can just go ahead and have the battery turned off. The other thing you can do is just set the battery percentage text in your status bar so you can turn off the battery indicator and just have that number if you want to. Then the third option you've got is a battery bar and this is really cool. This will display over any app you are running so you can always see how much battery you have got. This will put a bar right at the top of your screen which will move across the screen as you run out of battery. This also gives you options to have a charging animation and you can go ahead and change all the colors as well. Then in the clock settings, you can go ahead and hide the clock in your notification bar if you want to. You can also set it in the center like iOS and you can go through and you can change a couple of the size options and you can change things like AM and PM with the clock as well. Then you've got a couple of other settings. You've got a progress bar, which is very similar to the battery bar, but for downloads. There is also this really nice option which will enable you to adjust your brightness control by simply swiping over your status bar. You can then tweak a lot of things in your navigation bar. You can do things like swap the back and the recents keys. You can force your phone to show a menu key, which is useful if you're using a lot of sort of legacy apps. You can also change your navigation key color and you can also change the color that they glow. Then at the bottom here, you can also mess around with all your navigation bar heights and stuff like that. I wouldn't recommend you do this. Generally, this is gonna look worse than what stock Android looks like. But if you're running, say, a setup with a really, really low DPI, then this might be useful. Next, we've got some pie controls, and this is kind of like GMD gesture control. You can choose which side of the screen it shows up on, and this lets you access your soft keys um, just with a swipe in from the side of the screen. It will also give you some information like the clock and some of your notifications and which Wi-Fi network you're attached to. You can then also set these options at the bottom here to launch applications with a single swipe. Then in the power tweaks, you can tweak your power menu. So for example, I like to have the screenshot in my power menu. This means if I hold down my power button, my phone will open up that little power pop-up menu. And at the bottom, I've got an option to take a screenshot. And you can also do this with the option to record your screen. My favorite thing in the display tweaks is this button backlight notification. This is experimental, but it will mean that whenever you get a text, your back button will function like a notification light. So it will pulse on and off to let you know that you've got something. So that is Gravity Box. I haven't even got into half of what you can do with it, but I'm aware that this is a top 20 app list. So if I spend all my time talking about Gravity Box, it's not really gonna work. I may do a specific video just on Gravity Box in the future, but if you've got any questions about it, do go ahead and comment below and I'll try and help you out. Next up, we have Greenify, and this is pretty much everybody's favorite rooted app, and the exposed module is no exception. This lets you hibernate apps that use a lot of RAM on your phone. I've talked about this before, but using a RAM cleaner that just kills an app isn't gonna do you any favors. All it does is force Android to reopen it and actually slows your phone down. But if you use Greenify, you can hibernate apps, which actually puts them to sleep until you need them. This means you're not gonna get any notifications or background services from those apps. But if you don't need that, this is a really easy way of setting your phone to save more battery. The exposed module has a few things the normal app doesn't have. So for example, it has Doze on the go, which I've been using recently, and it dramatically increases your battery life when you're out and about and you're walking around. Um, it really is quite impressive. 
You can also set this option which will not remove notifications. This means if you hibernate an app and you've already got a notification for it, the notification isn't going to disappear. It just makes everything a little bit more streamlined. It's a little bit easier to use. Next up on this list, we have knock code. And this is really, really simple. It's exactly what you'd expect. It gives you LG's knock code functionality on any phone. You can tweak what this looks like. So you can change the background over which you tap each time and you can make it so you've got a line grid in the middle or not. But this just means when you turn your phone off and turn it back on again, the way to unlock it is to enter a knock code instead of adding in a password or any normal sort of pin. I actually really like this. It's a really quick way of inputting data to unlock your phone. And once your muscle memory kicks in, you can do this really, really quickly. Next on this list, we have native clipboard. And this just adds extra power to the clipboard on your phone. This means if you copy and paste anything, it is going to be saved into this clipboard here. And if you accidentally delete it, if you copy over something else, you are not going to lose what you copy. So now if I long press, I get both a paste and a clipboard option. If I open up the clipboard, you can see I've got all those things that I pasted. If I open up the clipboard, you can see I've got all that stuff that I copied straight there. I can then simply click on it and this will insert it into the text field that I'm working on. Next up, we have a module called Never Sleep and this does just exactly what it says on the tin. This lets you go through any app on your phone and you can make it so that your phone will never automatically turn off when you're in that app. This is really useful for video apps or something like the Kindle app if you want to make it so your phone normally will just turn itself off after five minutes, which is what you want if it's lying on the table. With this, it means if you're reading in bed or something like that, it is not just going to kill the app and force you to turn the screen back on again. Next on this list, we have Performance Profile, and this is a really good exposed mod if you're running games on slightly older hardware like I am on my Nexus 5. This allows you to add specific profiles for specific apps and will let you underclock or overclock your CPU accordingly. So for example, I have all these games here. If I go into Alto, I've got it set so that my CPU frequency is clocked right up to the top. You can choose both the minimum and the maximum CPU frequency for a specific app. Obviously, if you're using this to increase the performance on a game, you want to put this right to the top. This will negatively impact your battery life, but it does mean you can play much newer games on older hardware. And as well as the CPU frequency, you can also go ahead and tweak the GPU frequency as well. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Go ahead and hit the like button if it has been useful. You can follow me on all my social media things with the links in the description. If you have any suggestions for your favorite exposed modules or any root apps that you think I should be using, do go ahead and let me know. I love to see what you guys are using. But that is all from me, and I will see you guys, as always, in the next video. Peace.